Well, grab that notebook and calculator, and our topic tonight is domain and range. Number one, the set of all inputs is called the domain. So we've talked a lot about inputs and outputs. Remember, inputs are your x values, and that is going to be referred to as our domain. Number two, the set of all outputs, maybe you've guessed it and heard of that word, is called the range. And outputs is going to be our y value. So we can use these words interchangeably, inputs referring to domain and outputs referring to range. Exercise one. This notation is called roster form, and let's just put that in our notebook. We're given the points 3, 4, 4, 6, 5, 2, and 6, 4. And the question is, state the domain, range, and is this a function? So it's quite simple as long as we keep them straight. Domain, remember, are our x values. So I'm just going to go through and list out my x values. So I would say my domain, and again I'm going to list it in roster form, is 3, 4, 5, and 6. My range, remember, are my y values. So I'm just going to list those out. 4, 6, 2, and 4. Notice I'm not going to say the 4 twice. So 4, 6, 2, and I don't need to repeat that 4. Last part, is this given function term here a function or not? Well, remember, to be a function, every input has to be different. So as I compare, I had my domains were 3, 4, 5, and 6. So I would say yes. Every input is different. Okay, now, remember, if you got stuck on that, you could quickly plot those points and see if they pass the vertical line test. If I went up 3 over 4, up 4 over 6, up 5 over 2, and up 6 over 4, I would say if I drew a vertical line, those would all pass the vertical line test. So another way to test for a function. Exercise 2. State the range of the function f of n equals 2n plus 1 if its domain is the set 1, 3, 5. Should the domain and range in a mapping below? So we've seen this mapping once before. Remember, we're just going to draw a circle. We'll put our domain or our x values here. And we'll map, we'll draw arrows to our range or y values here. Now, notice they gave us the domain 1, 3, and 5. So again, those are my x values, and they go in that first circle. Now I just have to find the range. I have to find the y values, and I have that function f of n equals 2n plus 1. So all I have to do is evaluate each function. f of 1. When I substitute in my 1 in place of n, 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. So there's a member of my range. f of 3. 2 times 3 plus 1 is 6 plus 1 is 7, so there's a member of my range, and f of 5. 2 times 5 plus 1, so that's 10 plus 1, which is 11, and there's another member of my range. Now my last step in a mapping is to draw arrows uh, from the domain to the range. So 1 went to 3, 3 went to 7, and 5 went to 11. And there you have it. That's a mapping of my domain to my range. Exercise 3. The function y equals g of x is completely defined by the graph shown below. So I'm just going to make a note that this is g of x. Answer the following questions based on this graph. Determine the minimum and maximum x values represented on this graph. So I'm just going to write this down here. I'm looking for my min x value and my max x value. So simple enough, you're just going to look at the x-axis, which is this axis, and min is how far to the left do you go? What is this x value? I would say this is my farthest point to the left, and its x value is 1, 2, negative 3. So my min x is negative 3. My max x, how far to the right do I go? I go to this point is the farthest to the right, and if I come down to my x-axis, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 away. Okay. Part B, R determine the min y value and max y value. So instead of the x-axis this time, I'm looking at the y-axis. All right, so visualize going up and down. So how low for min does this graph go? Well, I'm going to find my lowest point, which I would say is right here. And remember, I want the y value. 
So I'm going to count down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to say that's negative 5. And now I need my max y value, so I'm going to find my highest point, which is up here. And that's a max y value of 1, 2, 3, 4. C. State the domain and range using set builder notation. So I'm going to show you two ways to represent the domain and range, first using set builder notation and then using interval notation. So we do need to keep those straight. So, starting with the domain in set builder notation, I'm going to describe my min x and my max x. So I'm going to say negative 3 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 6. Now, just make a note, you always have your min, then your x, then your max. And these will always go in the same direction. Negative 3 is smaller than 6, so less than each time. Now determine whether I put that equal sign underneath there is whether or not I have an open or a closed circle. So perhaps you need to, need to make a note to yourself. If you have a closed circle, that's going to be the less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. And if you have an open circle, you're just going to use either a less than or a greater than. Um, now range using set builder notation. Again, I'm going to start with my min, which was negative 5. Okay. Notice they're closed circles at my max and min's there. Is less than or equal to y this time, range is y, which is less than or equal to 4. Now, I'm going to do the same thing using something called interval notation. And our exam is going to use both, um, so we do need to know the difference between the two of them. Domain in this case... I'm just going to say negative 3 comma 6, and I'm either going to use a bracket or a parenthesis. Now I'm going to use the bracket for a closed circle and the parenthesis for an open circle. So again, since I had a closed circle at negative 3, I'm going to bracket that in, and I had a closed circle at 6, so I'm going to bracket that in. My range in this case is going to be my min y comma my max y. And again, I just have to determine if I had open or closed circles, and they were closed at both, so I'm going to bracket those in as well. We'll practice a few more, so don't worry if I went a little too fast for you. In our next graph here, I don't want you to feel like you have to copy it down. If you can just, you know, write some notes off to the side and move along with me, you're in good shape. So I'm going to do the same thing by stating the x min and x max. All right, so let's look at that x axis. How far to the left do we go, and how far to the right do we go? Well, the farthest point I can see is right here, and that has an x value of negative 5. And the farthest point to the right is right here, and that has an x value of positive 5. So I'm ready to write my domain. So let me start with interval notation. I'm going to say negative 5 comma 5, and I'm either going to use a parenthesis or a bracket. So if I look at negative 5, what type of circle do you see here, open or closed? Open. So that's going to tell me a parenthesis. And if I go to positive 5, what type of circle do we see? Closed. So that's going to say bracket. Now I'm going to write the domain again using set builder notation. I'm going to say negative 5 is, notice that open circle, so less than x. And I have a closed one here, so less than or equal to 5. Let's do the same with range. This time I need my y min and my y max. Okay, so we're looking on the y axis, which of course is this axis. So I'm looking up and down. I need my lowest point to my highest point. Remember, always start with the min. So I'm going to say this is as low as the graph goes, okay, which is a height of negative 2. And as high as the graph goes is a height of positive 2. So I know in interval notation I'm negative 2 comma 2 and I just have to decide whether I want a bracket or parenthesis. Now if you look at negative 2 I have one open and one closed. The closed is going to win out so I'm going to put a bracket there. And if you look at positive 2 you'll notice I have a solid line so it's closed if it's solid so I'll put a bracket there. In set builder notation I'm saying negative 2 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to positive 2. Let's practice one more. 
Exercise four. So again, I don't feel the need to copy this graph down if you can follow along with me and just again take some good notes here. The function f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 1 is graphed on the grid below. Which of the following represent the domain and range in interval notation? All right, so when I say domain, we've got to be thinking x values. And remember, it's always the x min and the x max. All right, so I'm going to look on the x-axis, and I'm going to look to the left and right. How far to the left does this graph go? Well, you might be thinking negative 2 because you see a closed dot there, but what does this arrow on the end represent? This is telling me the graph goes forever. So would you say you have an x min, or does it go forever? I'm saying forever. And forever in notation is going to mean negative infinity. And I'm saying negative because we're on the negative side here. Here's 0. These are all negative numbers. Likewise, does this graph stop at this point, or does it go on forever because of that arrow? Well, it goes forever. So I'm going to say my x max is positive infinity. Now, you can't actually reach infinity, right? It's not an actual number, so those are going to get parentheses around them. Let's talk range. All right, this time we're thinking y values. So let's look at this y-axis. We need a y min and a y max. Okay, so the minimum y value, I would say, is right here. Oops. This is as low as the graph goes. And that has a height of negative 1, 2, 3, 4. And how high does this graph go? Does it stop again at this point, or does it go up forever? I would say forever, so I'm going to use positive infinity. Now, notice I had a nice solid closed circle there, so I'm going to bracket my negative 4 in. And remember, parentheses not a number I can, or infinity is not a number I can count to, so I'm going to put a parenthesis around it. And there's our domain and our range. All right, well, now it's your turn to practice. Um, pause it, see what you get. We're going to go in interval and set builder notation. We want the domain and the range. So I'm looking at my x min and x max for domain. So the smallest number I hit on the x-axis is 0. And the largest number I hit, well, does this graph stop at 6 or does it go forever? I would say it goes forever this way, so I'm going to say that means infinity. All right, now I can write my domain. In interval notation, I'm saying 0, comma infinity. At 0, I, it's not open. You don't see an open hole, therefore it's closed, so I'll put a bracket around that. In infinity, we cannot count to, so we'll put a parenthesis. In set builder, that means 0 is less than or equal to x, but just less than infinity. Another way to say that is all x values have to be greater than or equal to 0. Let's talk range. So now I'm looking at the y values. I want to know what's the minimum value up to the maximum value. All right, well, think about this. It's going down, down, down. Does it ever stop going down? No, I don't think I have a min. It just keeps going down forever. So I'm going to represent that y min by negative infinity. And if I look at my max, does this stop or does it keep going up forever? It goes up forever. So I'm going to say my y max is positive infinity. So I'm going to say my domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. And those always get parentheses, those infinities. Therefore, my set builder notation, basically, I'm going to say it's from negative to positive infinity, or a quicker way to say that is all real numbers. <laughs> Exercise 5. The function f of x equals 2x plus 1 over x minus 4 has outputs given by the calculator table. Now all I did was I put this in y equals, and I went to my table on my calculator. Alright, and based off this table, we're just going to answer these questions. Evaluate f of 1. Now remember, I'm plugging 1 into x, so here's my x. When I plug 1 into x, my output is negative 1. So f of 1 equals negative 1. Let's do the same thing for 6, f of 6. When I plug 6 in my input, my output is 6.5. B, why does the calculator give an error at x equals 4? Have you seen that before? Error. Well, I'm going to scroll down here. Let's look at our equation. 2x plus 1 over x minus 4. Let's go ahead and find f of 4. 
I would say that's 2 times 4 plus 1 all over 4 minus 4. Well, 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1 is 9, and 4 minus 4 is 0. Grab your calculator and try dividing 9 by 0. Your calculator gives you a nasty message. You cannot divide by 0. All right, let's get that in our notebook. You cannot divide by 0. So what does that tell us? Well, 4 is not in the domain. That's why it's telling us error. I can't plug 4 in this equation. It is not in the domain. I get this error. Letter C. Are there any values except 4 that are not in the domain? Well, think about it. Is there any other number you could plug in here and get 0 on the bottom? What happens if you plug a 1 in? 1 minus 4 is negative 3. You're allowed to divide by negative 3. If I plug a 2 in, 2 minus 4 is negative 2. You're allowed to divide by negative 2. Is there any other number in the world you could put there that would get you a 0 on the bottom? I don't think so. So just keep in mind, you cannot divide by 0. Your calculator will say error, and all that tells us is that that number is not in the domain. Number 6. Which of the following values of x would not be in the domain of the function y equals the square root of x plus 4. So here's what I want you to do. Grab that calculator, and here's a picture of mine. We're going to hit this y equals button, which is in this top uh, button under the screen. You're going to hit that. If there's anything in here, you can clear it out, and you're going to type this equation in the square root of x plus 4. Now, if you have that old TI-83, when you hit square root, a parenthesis will come up, x plus 4, you'll have to close it. Otherwise, if you have this new one like I do, you'll see the, all this number, these numbers under the radical. Now, let's go to our table. So again, I have a picture of it, and to get to your table, um, notice you'll see the word table right here. I've circled it in blue. And notice it is in a different color. I'm going to have to hit second button, which should be maybe blue on your calculator, and then that table button, or graph. And you should get this table of values. Now, your x values might be different from mine. You might have to use the arrow keys that are in this corner here and scroll up and down. And I want to see which one is not in the domain here. So, um, as I scroll, I'm going to look at choice 3. Is negative 3 in the domain? Well, if I look at negative 3, its output is 1. So that is in the domain. Um, if I scroll through, if I looked at 0, it has a value, so it's in the domain. How about negative 8? If you scroll up and look at negative 8, do you have an error or do you have an actual value? I think you should have an error. So I'm going to go with negative 8 is not in the domain. Well, that's all we have for you today, guys. So let's practice our domain and range, and we look forward to seeing you in class. Have a great night.